We are absolutely pleased to welcome you to the next Big Thing stage. You're not going to want to miss the contents that we have planned for you this afternoon on the future of work, and especially our very next keynote speaker, who is a digital innovation expert and entrepreneur. She's founded several companies in the internet space. Her two most recent ventures include SheWorks, a platform that connects women to flexible job opportunities with over 20,000 registered users in 65 countries, and her other company, Transparent Business. This is a SaaS platform to manage remote teams in different geographic locations. Sylvia is also a commentator on CNN in Espanol and other top networks and a writer on online trends. So a big warm welcome. She joins us from New York and Miami, a global citizen. So please welcome Silvina Moschini. Hello, everyone. In 1999, I had the opportunity to work for a company that it was very famous in Latin America and somehow in Spain called Patagon.com. It was back then when the world was divided between brick and mortars and dot-com companies. And at that time, Patagon was suggesting that people will not manage their money in a traditional way, going to the bank, making lines, and waiting for the cashier to handle their money. They will do bank on the internet. As you can imagine, the surprise of the people when we were pitching the idea to find investors and analysts who will support our concept was, it was gigantic. People said that we were absolutely crazy, absolutely nuts, that this is not going to happen, that people will not manage their money on the internet. But the reality, 20 years forward almost, is that no one managed the money without managing through a platform or the internet. I'm here to tell you this story because I'm going to talk about the speed of change. And I'm going to talk about how disruption changed industries, changed the way we work, changed the way we buy, changed even the way we find love on the internet. Because I found my match.com husband as well, so I'm walking the talk on this. And if we talk about disruption, we cannot miss, and I will need some help to get there, the, the screen or not? We cannot talk, we cannot miss the speed at which change happened. And, and this disruption makes companies that exist today most likely to not exist in 40 years old. So. This disruption changed because we are living the perfect storm for digital transformation today. The storm that is brought by cloud technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, on-demand models for accessing the skills, the services, the resources that we need when we need it. When owning things is, more, is less important than having access to them. But this speed of change is going at the internet speed. As you can imagine, the speed of the internet is extremely fast. It took the telephone 75 years to actually reach 50 million users, but it took only three days to a company, a gaming company called Angry Birds, to read the same number of users. So this is happening, it's happening right now, and the speed of change will digitally transform the way we do absolutely everything. Another great example is how much money it makes a gaming company in reaching $1 billion dollars only three days, the Grand Theft Auto Sales 5 took only three days to reach a billion dollars in sales. Uh, can, can you please check to see, or perhaps someone can help me because I'm going nuts with this. It's not working well. And, and one of the most important things on this is that internet is the absolute enabler of this change. In Spain, it's one of the highest connected markets in the world in terms of internet connectivity. 93% of Spaniards access the internet mainly through mobile platforms, but also through their computers. Internet is the enabler, is the red dot that connects everything for education, for employment, for access to markets, for absolutely anything that we want to do. And in the world, and in Spain in particular, one of the main drivers is social media. The most popular social media platform in Spain 
is YouTube, followed by WhatsApp, but also Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and also LinkedIn are very popular, and they are driving users. It's changing the way we connect with other people. More cells than people are 17% more cell phones than people, and people are switching dramatically to a smartphone to have access. So companies are shifting the way they produce their goods, they connect with their customers, and we're shifting for a model from mobile-first companies to artificial intelligence, AI-first companies. We were talking about the on-demand economy, where accessing is more important than owning, and this not only comes to the resources, but it comes to the way we do businesses, the way we access the talent, which is what we are going to talk today. And all of this is driven by data. One main example that I think is very interesting is House of Cards. Thanks to data, artificial intelligence, and machine learnings, the producers of White of Cards were able to offer the two main persons in House of Cards, Kevin Spaces and the director of the social network, a contract without even going through the pilot, because the data suggested that based on the track record and residual users that will follow the series, House of Cards, the traditional British series, they will like it. They will also like Kevin Spacey and they like the director of the social network. And Netflix spent roughly $200 million in original content, and they are using data, machine learning, to predict what the users will like. So anticipating and basically trespassing the frontiers of access. And also one important trend, and I think in this one, it's something that we see not only in the public sector, but also in the private sector, is that transparency is becoming the new norm. We expect data transparency, we expect transparent access to information, because today in the digital world, one of the main concerns is security and is privacy. So we expect the companies to provide information transparent access to the data and how they use it. And all this transformation that we see in technology, in business model, we talk about cloud, we talk about AI, we talked about on-demand access, we talked about artificial intelligence, we talked about mobile, everything and current, the connectivity and the internet is important, is driving this digital revolution that we are living today. But the most important factor is not technology. Is the demographic change that we are living. The demographic change that we are living in is the one that will change the companies forever. The way we buy, the way we work, the way we hire, the way we conduct business, the way we learn, and absolutely everything. And these are the millennials. Many of you are millennials. Many of you are millennials by heart because you love technology. Millennials will be 75% of the workforce in the next five to 10 years, and the way they work is completely different than what we used to work when I was at the university as a young graduate. But when we look at millennials, they expect a completely dynamic way of work. And when we see the, age, the world of work today, we can see that it's absolutely broken. Talent is here, opportunities are there. There are 220 million unemployed people in the world. Yet, 50% of the companies complain they cannot find the talent they need. And there is also a gigantic skill gap. So we need to change that. And to change that, we need to change the way the work is done. Because we are living a massive transformation in the industry, yet companies are still working like in the Flintstone age, like pre-internet with analogic work model commanding people to show up in an office to prove that they are actually working, working with systems that are absolutely obsolete in the age that we are living now. So our vision on how the world is working and how it's going to be a massive reality in the next few years is remote work with on-demand access to talent. 40% of the companies are already companies like Cisco Systems or Google, depending on contingent workforce. But this is going to be added up to the number with the gig economy, people that want to work with flexible work models. Because at the end of the day, as we always say, work is something that you do, not somewhere that you work. If you have connectivity, if you have a computer, if you have transparency, you can work from anywhere. And if you plan to work on these models, you need to have flexibility. 
With all of this and the right technology, you will be able to command a team, to lead a team with designers in Argentina, project managers in Spain, developers in Ukraine, all together working thanks to the power of collaboration and the power of technology in a seamless and accountable manner, thanks to the technology. And if we come to think to that, this is possible today thanks to what we call the talent clouds. These are the aggregators, the talent marketplace. Think of un, um, an Amazon, a Mercado Libre, an aggregator not of good but of talent where people can go and apply and can get pre-qualified, assessed through different tests and available to be hired by the startups that are going to be growing fast, accessing to the skills, no matter where the skills are, because as we said, talent is here, opportunities as there. This is one of the things that we do for women at SheWorks, because women represent 50% of the advanced degrees, yet 51% leave the workforce due to lack of flexibility. What they call here in Spain, lack of difficulties for conciliation, la conciliación. So it becomes extremely important that we change the way we work if we want to have diversity, if we want to have women who represent also 80% of the decision buying power, we need to change the way we work. But if we want to have millennials, we also need to change it. So these talent clouds help you to aggregate this talent from anywhere in the world. It works like a match.com where you basically apply matching algorithms and data and machine learning to find the perfect match except that instead of a boyfriend or a girlfriend, in this case, you find the perfect talent. Freelancer, on a project basis, full-time, part-time employee. You can see with a very high level of details the DNA of your workforce, the skills, competencies, experience, the rating. As you know, we see Cabify, Uber, we see Amazon. We are very much driven when we make a reservation in Airbnb or in Expedia by the feedback received, because the feedback, the collective knowledge of the masses, the wisdom of the crowds, is what will determine in this future of work employability, if someone have a good performance, if they like what they see, this technology will allow you to find the best person, no matter where this person is, do trial to hire. As you know, many people interview really great, but when it comes to actually working, perhaps the expertise or the talent is not, not there. So when you do trial to hire, you actually create a virtual meritocracy. And this also becomes very important. And we were saying about how to provide direct feedback. This collective knowledge propels talent on top of the global market. So you can have the basic skills exactly in the market where this market, this market produced, but without having to deal with the relocation. In Silicon Valley, where I lived for several years, it becomes extremely important because of the visa situation, the cost of living, the poaching, all the issues that we have. But when we run startups, we also know that it's quite challenging to attract talent to uh, work with us when there is so much competition out there. But then when we find the talent, and this talent is global, we have also another challenge, is how do we manage it? Remote teams brings a lot of challenge along, trust, engagement, and accountability. So how do we deal with that? And the answer is transparency. Transparency is indeed not orange, the new black. And transparency allows you for coordination and collaboration, but it also allows you for real-time coordination of the talent. It allows you to shift the focus from monitoring the people, physical presence, to actually follow the work process, to make sure that it doesn't matter if they look sleepy, if they show up, that they are there for you. You can follow their work, you can collaborate in real time, centralize the assets, and also uh, basically build an exponential organization. And when you build an exponential organization, means that you build an organization that is 10 times faster, 10 times cheaper, and 10 times more efficient than the organizations that we know. And to close on this is we are living the perfect storm for digital transformation. We need to invent, and for that, we need to experiment. And this is a gift for one of my most admired entrepreneurship vessels, and thank you very much for the opportunity to share this with you.